2016 meeting of the Planning Board of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the town planner will not be with us tonight. Um, if you have any comments or questions for her specifically, please let us know and we'll make sure they get passed along to her. We have um, three items of business on the agenda. Um, approval of minutes of the prior meeting. We, <coughs> we have the matter of 517 Ocean House Road LLC versus Town of Cape Elizabeth, dealing with a remand from the Superior Court on findings for the uh, 541 Ocean House Road site plan approval. Following that, we have the final hearing on the Old Mill Road four lot subdivision. And at the end of the meeting, there will be um, an opportunity for public comment on anything that has not been dealt with as a regular agenda item. The uh, minutes of the June 21 meeting have been circulated. Members have any comments or questions on them? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. Motion to approve. Henry? Second. Jonathan seconded. Any discussion on the second motion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. The next, um, <coughs> pardon me, order of uh, business is the um, 517 Ocean House Road LLC versus Town of Cape Elizabeth. As a result of the order dated May 10, 2016, the Cumberland Superior Court has remanded this matter to the Planning Board for additional findings of fact for site plan approval approved for 539-541 Ocean House Road. The Planning Board has discussed the findings at the June 21st meeting. The discussion has been formatted into draft findings for the Board to consider this evening. The procedure will be as follows. We will summarize the agenda for the benefit of the public, which basically I've just done. The Planning Board will allow an opportunity for public comment. <coughs> uh, under our rules, the public comment period will be limited to a total of 15 minutes with a maximum of three minutes per speaker. At the close of the public comment period, the Board will then discuss um, the remand and the uh, work that's been done on a res response to the remand order. And then at the close of the discussion, the board has the option to make or not make additional finding findings to table the item to the next meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, each finding will be considered by making a motion, a second, and a discussion, which can include any changes to the proposed finding, either by friendly amendment in which the motion maker and the second agree to the amendment, or vote on the amendment, and then a vote. Um, I, I believe I would let the summary stand as I just mentioned it, unless any board members have any further uh, explanatory comments they'd like to make. Um, we will now uh, allow an opportunity for the public to comment. Um, would anybody like to be heard in this matter? Ms. Mia, you said you, you don't care to be heard, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, okay. You, yeah, I should point out that... I'm having a hard time hearing. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Mia, you also, um, for the uh, 517 Ocean House Road, has submitted a letter, which I believe you all have uh, copies of, which will go on the record, and your three minutes will be done. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Peggy McGeehy. I'm with a law firm of Perkins Thompson. And I'm here on behalf of a 517 Ocean House uh, Road. Uh, we did submit comments, as the chair mentioned. Uh, I don't know if they have been forwarded to you. I had forwarded them to John Wall, who forwarded them to Maureen. And if she's not here, then she may not have gotten them to you. On the they, were, they, they, they were forwarded. And, and I did provide written copies, which you, we, you have. Um, what I would ask. Um, Mr. Chairman, is uh, this is about a two-page letter. I'm thinking if I could just read it. Um, it might be three minutes, might go to four, without the footnotes. And that way, I'll know that you have been able, had a chance to review it, if that's all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, it came, I believe, sometime this afternoon. I saw it my Between four and five. Cell phone. Yeah. It, was, it was rather late. I have read it. I think the members have had a chance to do it. 
uh, we have a lot of time to spend on this thing. Well, that's fine. Then if I'll could, summarize. If you could summarize it, that'd be very, very good. nice. All right. Uh, we have three points. Um, the court has remanded three standards, uh, the lighting, the storm, water, and the screening uh, for findings. And the court could have chosen to uh, um, ask the board to have uh, another hearing for new evidence or for the board to consider uh, what um, uh, the record shows. Because you'll recall that the, uh, the town had maintained to the court that there was an incomplete transcript and there was more infor substantive information about lighting and all that, which um, was not available to the court. And so that's why you had that augmented uh, transcript back in June. But the court did not say bring in new evidence. And one of the, so what we're asking is what we, you have proposed findings that are set forth in the uh, planner's uh, July 19 memo. We're asking you not to use them uh, because they include evidence that was not in the record. It's not in the augmented, trans augmented transcript. It seems to come from uh, some of the comments from uh, board members which, as you know, the board itself cannot be doing research and providing testimony. Uh, and some of the examples are, uh, there was a comment that uh, the uh, parking lot was uh, private, uh, not public in the back, and that's why the lack of lighting in the back and the lack of lighting in Building 3 was uh, immaterial. Uh, actually, the record says differently. It says that this is a second entrance for the public, and, uh, and so there was no opportunity for um, any uh, buddy, member of the public, including the appellant, to uh, rebut that. But that's new evidence that's outside the record. Uh, there are other examples about how there's no complaints about the lighting. Uh, there was uh, uh, about other parking lots in town have uh, uh, the same kind of screening. And this is not found anywhere in the record. So those things should not be included in the findings. There's also uh, findings, uh, statements in the findings that are just wrong. Uh, they say that the uh, uh, town engineer, engineer said that uh, there was adequate data and there was nothing more that needed to be done. Well, the opposite's the case. The uh, letter from the t uh, town engineer says that uh, the engineer, and I'll, I'll quote this part, uh, says, our comments here are to facilitate future review of the project. It should be noted that additional information may result in additional comments. So it's not that the engineer thought that uh, he had all that he had to say and all the information, uh, but that um, he expected more information, including all of the information that uh, comes up in the last two findings about um, there will be no biological or chemical um, impact and there will be a percolation. There was no evidence about that and the uh, town engineer did not have data to comment on that. So we feel that there is wrong evidence um, and there is new evidence and lastly, there are, in some of the findings, just conclusions with no facts at all. And uh, th for that reason, uh, we uh, maintain that, the, um, uh, that these are uh, legally flawed, and uh, we would ask you to start over, look at the record yourself, and to prepare the findings. Uh, and also, and if you're going to consider any new evidence, certainly allow uh, the um, uh, public and the appellant to uh, submit its own in, uh, uh, evidence on the points that uh, the board members themselves have raised. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm ha available to answer any questions. Thanks. <coughs> would, any <coughs> Excuse me. would anybody else uh, like to be heard on this matter? There being no further uh, speakers, I'll close the public portion of the um, public comment portion of the meeting. <coughs> um, I, I think we've discussed previously um, We'll have an initial opportunity to discuss the the overall job, how the uh, information that was derived at our last meeting has been transcribed and put before you. Uh, and there is a new version which uh, came out this afternoon, if you haven't seen it, that had a couple of um, uh, minor corrections uh, in it. Uh, at that point, the plan is to go numbered paragraph by numbered paragraph, of which there are 16, um, and have a motion second and vote on each one of those numbered paragraphs, because each is a separate finding. 
So we will read the introductory part, the be it ordered part, once, and then go paragraph number by number, uh, it being understood that each one is responsive to the additional order in the resolution. Do any board members have any comments or discussion you'd like to get into before we go ahead and vote? Caroline. A question based on something uh, Attorney McGee said. Um, my understanding was that we were to bring to this discussion uh, our recollections of why we came to the conclusions that we came to and in specifically when it comes to the rear parking lot that she addresses um, that was something we learned on the sidewalk it's a it's gated after after hours there is no access through the other driveway there is no access through the current driveway so i don't know whether how explicitly that's stated in the record but that's all something we learned on the sidewalk so that's part of what the decision was based on and i i feel like i was just told that i was wrong in making that decision because i didn't have it was i didn't have it written down somewhere because it was something I learned verbally. It wasn't anything I did separate research on. It was an open public meeting that I went to. Um, and that's where much of this comes from that, we're, that makes this up. So am I wrong in my thinking on this, or am I on the right track? Well, let me just add to that, and others respond to. Um, I, I think you're correct. I have the same understanding. Ms. McGee's letter has been seen by John Wall, and, and he's not given us any further advice on it. Um, and I, I think we went to great efforts at our last meeting to get our collected knowledge from all the record that we had, the hearings, the site walk, the plans, and so forth. So I, I tend to agree with you, and you're certainly under no obligation to agree with counsel for the uh, um, the 517 Ocean has. Okay. Uh, Elaine? I was just going to say I agree with Carol. The site walk was an open public meeting. It is not um, the practice of the town of Cape Elizabeth to have any transcript or minutes of our site walks. We have never done that. We didn't for that one. But the public was invited, and any information presented at that meeting was on notice for the public because it was a public meeting. So I think it is completely within boundaries to use information from the site walk. And I think, as we discussed, apparently um, the conclusion was that the planning board was not sufficiently articulate in stating in its initial findings the basis for its ultimate conclusion. So what we're doing here is being more articulate with respect to evidence that we had in front of us from the very beginning. And I am not aware of any case in which there's anything that appears in the findings that we're about to go through, which I think we've all reviewed, that wasn't in fact in the record and in our minds. And what we're trying to do here is what I think the court has given us, us the opportunity to do, which is to be more articulate about what our conclusions were and what our thought process was when we made those original findings. And I think in each instance, that's what we've done. And just to extend that, uh, part of the so-called record that council described only went to that May 15th meeting in 2015. Uh, what the record that the planning board was looking at included workshops, site walks, all the applicants' plans that we have reviewed thoroughly and the actual uh, meeting itself. So to characterize that the only record was that meeting itself is flawed. Um, I think the planning board, when was asked for us, there was a remand was ordered by the court. We got the materials that we had looked at before. There was no new materials provided to the planning board. It was a review of everything that we had before. And just like Elaine, characterized we had to be more articulate with what our findings were and I think we've done just that based upon the entire record of what we looked at with regards to the summer of an application so I'm perfectly satisfied with how the planning board has gone about this uh, 
order by the Superior Court. Peter, could I add one more comment? Sure. Um, I wanted to specific address some of the assumptions that have been made about the town engineer's letter, particularly the quote here, our comments are to facilitate further review. It should be noted that additional information may result in additional comments. That is standard verbiage. That is always in the town engineer's letter because the town engineer is not at our meetings. Were we late, and the town engineer doesn't want to be bound by a letter when evidence to the contrary may come up in a subsequent meeting. So the town engineer is allowing himself room to come back and look at his conclusions again should additional data come forth. The, the planning board has never interpreted, in my almost nine years on the planning board, has never interpreted that language to mean that the town engineer expects requires or thinks we need to provide additional information. We have always interpreted that language, which has been standard language with some variations among town engineers forever, to say, if we learn something else at the meeting, we might want to bring it back to the town engineer. And if we do, the town engineer might come to a different conclusion. So I think that the, uh, the attorney's letter that we have in front of us takes an interpretation of that language that is completely incorrect. Uh, Joe, anything that you like to add? Um, no, I got three lawyers here. <laughs> <laughs> enough. <laughs> we can keep this going forever. Uh, Henry, how about you? No, likewise, three lawyers is enough. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I, I'd just like to say again that <clears throat> this does not represent new research, which I think was an unfortunate reference by counsel. It does not represent new evidence. It was based on a review of all of the, the record of this case. Ms. Lane correctly points out to re-articulate, perhaps articulate in a more complete fashion uh, in response to the court's order. So uh, I think the board is quite comfortable with the uh, quality of the work we've done and that we'll be submitting. Um, if there's no further general discussion, um, Want to start here? Yeah, <clears throat> let's let's do that, and let's let's just so we we've got the game plan here. Carolyn, why don't you start off, read the be it ordered, mm -hmm. and then paragraph one. Okay. And then we will have a um, motion, second opportunity for discussion and resolution, and then rotate to a lane, and we'll just go clockwise. Okay. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted by the applicant. Advice provided by staff, including the town planner, town engineer, and code enforcement officer, and the site visit conducted on April 18, 2015, the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board makes the following findings in response to an order from the Superior Court and remand in 517 Ocean House Road, LLC, versus Town of Cape Elizabeth et al. Number one, the site lighting is adequate for safety. The facts supporting this finding include the plans which show six different locations the two just shows six different locations where lighting exists the location of the fixtures on the plan combined with the planning board's knowledge of the site gained from the site walk indicate lighting was adequate at the site walk it was observed that the site is flat and there was existing lighting for illumination during the hours of darkness Information was also obtained at the May 19, 2015 meeting from the applicant in response to questions from planning board members Sarbeck and Volent. A planning board member asked Mr. Tamaro about lighting and he stated that there was sufficient lighting. A light is not located in the back parking lot, but this is not open to the public. It is to be used by the employees of the landscaping business and the plans show that's eight, I believe. That's where the two go. <laughs> that eight. was two gales. Gates. Gates. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that limit the public's access to the back parking lot. The planning board also relies on comment from the town engineer. The town engineer did not raise any issues regarding lighting, which su suggests that the lighting was adequate. Second. <clears throat> okay, we have a second motion. Any discussion on paragraph number one? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. <coughs> uh, number two. 
There will not be excessive illumination based on the fixtures shown in the application, fixtures observed during the site walk, the distance of fixtures from property lines, and the downward angling of fixtures closest to property lines. The facts supporting this finding include review of the plan submitted and observations from the site walk showing buffers such as trees and shrubs at the property lines. At the site walk, the planning board members looked carefully at the existing lighting and no new lighting was proposed. On the back property line, there will be no lighting and no public parking. The board asked and was informed that there had been no complaints made regarding excessive light from the existing fixtures. The planning board discussed a photometric study and decided to waive that submission requirement. Second. We have seconded the motion. Any discussion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Lightning will be adequately shielded by existing buildings, existing and proposed fencing, and existing and proposed plantings. The facts supporting this finding include review of the plan submitted and observations from a site walk showing buffers such as trees and shrubs at the property line. The plan showed the location of trees, fencing buildings and buildings which provide shielding and existing lighting. The board asked and was informed that there had been no complaints made regarding excessive lighting from the existing fixtures. Second. <coughs> second by Joe. Uh, we have a second motion. Any discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. <coughs> Number four, please. Four, the landscaping around and within parking lots, including the lawn areas, maple trees, half barrels with ornamental grasses, and sign planters, do soften the hard surface of parking areas. The facts supporting this finding include review of the plan submitted and observations at the site walk. Trees will be planted and granite boulders will also be placed. The combination of half barrels with plantings, three maple trees, and perennials will soften the view. The replacement of asphalt with lawn area will also soften the view. Cars will be visible, but there will be enough buffer to soften the view of the parking areas. The planning board noted you can see cars at... I think the word in, in. should be inserted there. Yes. In all the planning board noted you can see cars in all the parking lots in town, including the recently approved Rudy's project, which is in the same zoning district as this project and subject to the same requirements. Second. We have a second in motion. Any discussion? Call for, I'm sorry. Oh, vote. All in favor? Opposed? Can I add something? Sure. Because um, it can apply to something coming up here. Specifically on our notation that you could see cars in the Rudy's parking lot, I think this is not new information. It's not new evidence. It was information in the minds of this planning board at the time. Many of us, most all of us, were on the planning board at the time of the Rudy's project, and it's, it's part of our institutional knowledge, as it were, and, and was also something that was specifically discussed. Yeah, and I would add it, because I made the comment at the last meeting, it's just a, a matter of common experience. If you drive back and forth in these streets, you do see places that have cars, and, and calling on the Rudy's as a particular example, because they are the plaintiff in, in this action. For the I have a question. <clears throat> is, is what you said supposed to be part of these findings or <coughs> no it's not no. I, it's it was a, part of the record of tonight's oh you, you wanted that as a discussion before the resolution or before one of the other ones coming up okay but it, it comes up as here and it will come up again you have, you have no text in the resolution? no okay i don't think it's necessary that's what i needed to do. and just for the record as elaine knows i i was not on the planning board at the time of the ruby's approval but i am aware that there are uh cards are uh, visible from the road. I have just one, one comment. I think members of the board that have been on board for some time, whilst we don't go by gut feeling, we do understand what questions to ask based on the experiences that we've had in past applications. And so the answers 
that we apply and the reasoning that we apply is based on that experience, which is part of the which is part and parcel of that either the meeting and or the site walk. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have number four. Um, we have a motion that's been seconded. I th well, let me call we it we yeah. uh, for a, a resolution. All in favor? Opposed? And carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, number five. Uh, number Number five, a landscaped area is located between the road and the parking lot and includes plantings that sufficiently obscure the view of parked cars and parking lots. The facts supporting this finding include a view of the plan submitted and observations at the site walk. The combination of half barrels with plantings, three maple trees and perennials, and replacement of asphalt with lawn area will soften the view. An esplanade planted with street trees along the frontage of the property combined with plantings along the edge of the property draws focus away from the parking lot and therefore obscures it. The most visible parking lot, which is stark, will be removed and replaced with grass. Cars will be visible, but there will be enough buffer to soften the view of the parking areas. The planning board noted you can see cars all the, in all the parking lots in town, including the recently approved Rudy's project, which is in the same zoning district as the project and subject to the same requirements. The intent is not to hide the parking lot, but to soften it and blend it into the landscape, and the proposed plan softens the starkness of the existing conditions. Second. And we have a second in motion. Any discussion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Number six, please. Oh, that's my turn. The planning board waives as provided in section 18-2-7 the filing of pre and post stormwater calculations and any other information not provided by the applicant. The facts supporting this finding include the letter from Northeast Civil Solutions submitted by the applicant, specifically page four, which describes the reduction in impervious, surf, impervious area and the existing stormwater flow. This letter demonstrates that a stormwater analysis was done by the applicant and that there is a reduction in impervious surface. Because of the decrease in impervious surface, the calculation of pre-development existing conditions and post-development proposed plan stormwater volume calculations for the two and 25 year storm would be pointless. A large area of asphalt was removed and replaced with grass. Buildings were also removed. There was no existing stormwater problem identified. The town engineer supported the waiver request, and the planning board finds that there was sufficient basis to support the waiver. Second. <coughs> we have seconded the motion. Any discussion? Uh, Elaine. I would like to propose a friendly amendment and remove the word pointless. I'm not sure where it comes from, but I'm not, it's not a word I'm comfortable with, and I would propose instead of pointless that we say would not provide relevant additional information. That's acceptable to me. Okay. Be pointless goes and not provide relevant information? Relevant additional information. Not provide relevant additional. Should it not be valid rather than re relevant? Mm -hmm. No. I don't think so. Okay. Um, it is acceptable. A, a friendly amendment, which has been accepted. And with that text change, we have a second? Second. Any discussion of a second in motion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number seven, please. Number seven. The planning board finds that the basic site data provided is adequate to make a determination of compliance with section 1995D, stormwater management. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and the letter from Northeast Civil Solutions submitted by the applicant, specifically page four, which describes the reduction in impervious area and the existing stormwater flow. This letter demonstrates that a stormwater analysis was done by the applicant and that there is a reduction in impervious surface. The town engineer's letter, specifically paragraph four, agrees that adequate data was submitted and the planning board relies on the town engineer's expertise. Second. We have a second motion. Is there any discussion in that motion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number eight, please. 
Number eight, the Planning Board reduces and waives any requirements of this stormwater ordinance for additional information or work because the basic site data furnished under section 18-2-6A demonstrates that the estimated cost of construction and long-term maintenance resulting from compliance with the design requirements in any instant clearly outweigh the downstream benefits to be achieved by compliance. The facts supporting this finding, including the applicant's proposal to remove asphalt and building and not increase the existing building footprint, decreasing the impervious surface and resulting in less stormwater drainage from the site. The town engineer's letter talks about the flow of water on the property and changes to the piping, demonstrating that he has clearly has the, that he had clearly de uh, considered downstream impacts and did not need to ask any or additional data to be provided in order to deal with the off-site Im impacts. We have all the information we need is required by site plan review, as supplement supplemented by the stormwater ordinance, along with the response of the town engineer Steve Hardy and the response of Northeast Civil Solutions. Second. <coughs> we have a second motion. Any discussion? Um, I believe that in reading this, you did not intend to change any of the wording here. You changed the word discharge to drainage. I'm not sure that matters, but I, I was... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Here you wrote, you read drainage rather than discharge. Was that intentional or just a misread? A misread. So you intended it to be just as it appears? Absolutely. Okay. Discharge. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? On this, uh, call for a vote in favor. Opposed? Very unanimously. Thank you. Uh, number nine, please. Number nine, based on the information provided on the existing conditions of the site and the reduction in impervious surface, adequate provisions will be made for the collection and disposal of stormwater. The facts supporting this finding include the applicant's submitted plans including details of stormwater structures to be added. The planning board also relies on the applicant's proposal to significantly reduce the impervious surface on the site and the town engineer's recommendations. Second. We have a second a motion. Is there any discussion? I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Excuse me, number 10, please. Number 10, the conversion of paved and other impervious areas to loamed and seeded lawn area will result in retaining stormwater using natural features. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials submitted by the applicant depicting existing conditions and proposed improvements that reduce the existing impervious surface and the town engineer's recommendations. The planning board specifically notes the additional front yard planting replaces an existing parking area. Second. We have a second motion. Is there any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 11, please. The reduction in impervious area will detain and retain water on the site at a rate below pre development of the proposed site plan. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials depicting a significant decrease in impervious surface. Because there is less impervious, there will be less runoff from the site. The newly landscaped areas will capture and retain runoff that currently is leaving the site after hitting pavement. The planning board also relies on the recommendations of the town engineer. Second. <clears throat> I, I think it should be imperfect, impervious surface, not just impervious. I mean, it's just minor. But oh, where is that? It's, uh, That's fine. significant improvement surface because there is less impervious surface. So That's fine. There are a couple of places where... Oh, okay. It says impervious surface a couple of spots. Maybe. Yeah, but then it just says impervious. Yeah, so it should refer to impervious surface yeah. in all cases. Be specific. That is an acceptable change. Okay. With those friendly changes made, um, I'll call for a resolution. A, a vote, uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 12, please. On and off site downstream channels will have sufficient capacity to carry flow without adverse effects. The facts supporting this finding 
include the plans and materials depicting a significant decrease in impervious surface. Because there is less impervious surface, <coughs> there will be less runoff from the site. The newly landscaped areas will capture and retain runoff that currently is leaving the site after hitting the pavement. The planning board also relies on the recommendations of the town engineer. Second. We have a second motion. Is there any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Raise unanimously. Number 13, please. The closure of the existing drainage way at adjacent to the new path is sufficiently is specifically approved. The facts supporting this finding, including the plan submitted by the applicant and the proximity of the open channel to the road and the new path, the town engineer makes specific recommendations regarding drainage in proximity to the new path and supported closing the open channel once the pedestrian path is added. Second. second. We have a second motion. Any further discussion? Call for a vote in favor. Opposed? Very unanimously. Number 14, please. The stormwater design will not damage streets, adjacent properties, downstream properties, soils, or vegetation. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials submitted by the applicant and the recommendations of the town engineer. Second. We have a second in motion. Is there any further discussion? All for a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Uh, number 15, please. Number 15, the stormwater design does not impede upstream stormwater flows. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials submitted by the applicant and the recommendations of the town engineer. The decrease in impervious surface will enhance a percolation of stormwater on the property rather than a potential backup onto upstream properties. Second. We have a second motion. Any further vote on the line? Um, I have a minor proposed change there in the, towards the end where it says, rather than a potential backup. Um, I would like to say, uh, starting back a bit, the decrease in impervious surface will enhance percolation of stormwater on the property and then add reducing the likelihood of any backup onto upstream properties. That removes the words rather than a potential and inserts the words reducing the likelihood of any. It's acceptable to me. Okay, we have that. Uh, and you have that next? Yeah. Okay. So we have the second in motion with the uh, friendly amendment being accepted by the person making the motion. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Uh, last, uh, number 16. The biological and chemical properties of the receiving waters. Receiving or receiving? Receiving waters receiving. will be degraded by the stormwater runoff from the development site. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, no. Um, plans and materials submitted by the applicant that replace asphalt with lawn, resulting in increased percolation and treatment by vegetation of water that does not discharge from the site. Whoa, that was hard to read. Did you say will or will not? Um, will not. Yeah. Will, I said will. The biological and chemical properties will be degraded? No, will not be. Will not be degraded. Will be degraded. No, it will not be degraded. Because, of, because the property is... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry. Can I uh, make a comment? Receiving oh, waters. Okay. Yep, okay. I, am, I apologize. I'm, I, oh, I don't know we know need to discuss what it. What receiving waters means or what it's referring to. You said receding? Receiving. Receiving. It, it reads receiving. And that is what I said, receiving, yes. Is that what, but you, then somebody said, did it mean receding? Well, I, I said that. Do we have a discussion on this? Sure. I, I mean, think receiving. I would, that, I would have thought that you want to 
reduce the chemical properties? No, the receiving waters are the waters downstream of the so, site. Yeah. And I you don't want to... Degrade them. I was reading it backwards. I was thinking of the waters on the site that were going to be treated by the percolation. So I think it's re referring to downstream. I, I understand that now. I'm telling you why I made the misstatement. So, um, Would you like to read it again? Why don't you? Yeah. The whole thing? <laughs> it was hard to read the first time. <laughs> Wait, before, uh, Can I uh, suggest one, of, got, one addition up. before it's reread where it says, because um, I think the intent here is that because of things that might run off from this site, there is no biological or chemical um, downgrading of any water off of the Precisely. site. Correct. Precisely. And, I, and, it, correct. and it then refers to um, the lawn, the, the fact that the applicant has replaced asphalt with lawn. And I just wanted to add after the word lawn and additional plantings, because the lawn is not the only new biological stuff going on the right. site that will help to clear out the water. So I'd right. like to add that. But I also would say that I believe whether I stated the motion correctly or not, I think we need to vote on the motion as stated, even if it is correct, incorrect, and vote against it and then state a the corrected motion. Okay. I believe I believe was that would be. Well, you can. Was it seconded? I thought someone seconded. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't think you got. No, no, no. Okay. We haven't gotten to a seconded. Okay, so it wasn't seconded, so I'm wrong. That's okay. why I ask you to, to read it. You restate yep. the motion. Yep. So, okay. Would you like to restate the motion? I will. From from Elaine's notes. <laughs> where she got her, her addition. The biological and chemical properties of the receiving waters will not be degraded by the stormwater runoff from the development site. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials submitted by the applicant that replace asphalt with lawn and additional plantings, resulting in increased percolation and treatment by vegetation of water that does not discharge from the site. That does discharge. That does well, discharge from the site. Well, I put the not. Japers, you should have given me that one. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> you didn't really want that hot, right? I did not want that okay. one. Second. Any further? Well, we have a motion. Do we have she a motion? seconded it. I seconded it. Okay, we have a second motion. Is there any further discussion on this piece of artwork? <laughs> okay, there being none, I'll call for a vote. Uh, favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. And that, <laughs> that was is painful. The last item on the remand matter. And uh, can I, board yes. members have any further comments they'd like to make before we move to the next agenda? Just to make sure, for the record, that there is no misunderstanding of what we have approved in item 16, could I ask Hiromi to read back to us the motion as sure. you have it? Yes. Number 16. The biological and chemical properties of the receiving waters will not be degraded by the stormwater runoff from the development site. The facts supporting this finding include the plans and materials submitted by the applicant that replace asphalt with lawn and additional plantings, resulting in increased percolation and treatment by vegetation of water that does not that does discharge from this site. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that is a very difficult one to read. That's, what, that's the motion you made, Carol Ann, right? Okay. Yes. And that's the motion I seconded. Okay. And that's the one that was and approved. That's the one Thank you. Be in the record. <laughs> Terrific. Thanks, Hiromi. <laughs> okay. So we are, I think, good to go to this agenda item. Um, thank you. We will next uh, turn to the Old Mill Road Four Lot Subdivision. Mark Jordy is requesting a minor subdivision review of the proposed four-lot subdivision located at 41 Old Mill Road. The application was deemed complete on June 21st, and a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. <coughs> the plan will be re reviewed under Section 16.2.3 of the subdivision ordinance. 
procedure will be as follows. Uh, the applicant or representative will summarize any changes made to the plan since the last meeting. The board will then open the uh, public hearing. Once the public hearing has been closed, the board will discuss the application, <clears throat> at the end of which uh, the board has the option of approving, approving with conditions, tabling, or denying the application. So we'll first hear from the applicant. Uh, John, would you like to go over what's been done since the last meeting? Good evening. My name is John Mitchell, uh, representing Mark Jordy. Um, would the board uh, want me to just sort of update uh, the changes on the plan since our last submission? If you would mind, yes. This okay. is, you know, for the public hearing record and the, the right. people viewing remotely, and so that'd be helpful. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to summarize uh, the changes on the plans, uh, which there haven't really been that many um, since our last submission. Um, we have addressed, uh, first of all, we've addressed all of the comments um, on Marine's memo dated June 21st. Um, and these were addressed, our responses to the, her memo um, is on our letter, which you have a copy of, dated June 30th. Uh, basically, from her comments, there were only two notes that were added to the subdivision plan. Note number 22 was added, uh, which pertains to the 100-year floodplain. And note 23 was added that pertains to the maintenance of the common land. We have also uh, addressed all of the comments received by Steve Harding, the town engineer, uh, in his letter dated June 15th. Um, and uh, our responses to his comments are also on that June 30th letter, which you have a copy of. Um, there were three items uh, made, changes to the plan. Note number 25 was added, uh, which pertains to the maintenance of the rain garden. Note number 26 was added, uh, which pertains to the maintenance of the vegetation um, for purposes of adequate site distance. And then the third item, uh, we added a, an erosion control berm as uh, recommended by the town engineer. Uh, we have also addressed all of the comments raised by Steve Harding in his latest memo, our latest letter dated July 11th. Um, we, uh, note number 26 was amended. Uh, which added uh, a little more language uh, to the site distance lengths. Note number 27 was added to the plan, uh, which addressed uh, site distance coming, exiting out of the two new driveways onto Old Mill Road. And uh, a minor uh, comment uh, was that we change the depth of the loam along the grass shoulders from five inches to two inches as recommended by Steve. And then finally, we have addressed uh, condition number three in Maureen's most recent letter um, dated July 19th regarding the common When I read the um, uh, condition number three, um, both Mark and I had a concern about uh, the term uh, existing vegetation line. Well, let me make sure I read that properly. Mm I got it somewhere. Oh, I got I got it. I got it. In her uh, condition, uh, she mentioned that the existing vegetation line shown on lot four 
that's the common land, be surveyed in up to four monuments. Um, and I just, we wanted a, uh, to find out what she meant by existing vegetation line. So Mark and I met with Maureen uh, yesterday, actually, and um, um, to talk about uh, her uh, interpretation of that line, as well as the methodology used to uh, locate the, uh, the limit of natural vegetation. And we worked that out. We agree um, on the methodology. Um, we're going to hire a surveyor to go out and actually survey the limit of natural vegetation along the southerly edge of the southerly and westerly edge of the uh, the common land. Uh, once we do that, we're going to monument. Uh, there'll be up to four, possibly more, um, monuments placed along that line um, with dimensional lines uh, from the monuments to uh, the corners of lots two and three. Uh, so uh, Marine agreed with that, uh, that method and uh, that's what we're proposing to do. Um, since then, um, I, actually today, uh, late this afternoon, we received a copy of the, her revised condition number three. Um, I think you have a copy of that, I believe. Um, and, you know, we unfortunately, uh, Mark's attorney, Rick Cheney, is was out of town today, not able to attend tonight's meeting. Um, and uh, he had a few comments uh, that he wanted to uh, talk to Maureen about, or talk to the board, actually. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I think what I'd like to do is to ask the board, as they go through the conditions of approval, is to allow us to work with Maureen or the town attorney um, in working out the exact wording of condition number three. Um, so that's a request that we have. Um, um, John, could you explain what you have in mind on that? Uh, excuse me? Could you explain what you have in mind, the changes that... Some of the changes. <coughs> um, yeah, I think so. Um, Rick suggested, uh, like for instance, okay, so I'm reading from Maureen's, uh, the, the revised condition number three, uh, the second paragraph where it says, hazard, parentheses, dead or storm damaged trees and or invasive vegetation. Um, Rick would like to delete in areas outside building envelopes and south of the no clearing line. Um, I think his reasoning is that uh, there are no building envelopes in the common area, so that, that term is not pertinent to that, uh, uh, that paragraph. And in south of the no clearing line, um, he, I think Rick is saying that we, there's, in the paragraph above, there's already condition that we not uh, remove any vegetation south of this line. So it's a, it's a redundant uh, phrase. Uh, so he'd like to strike that uh, portion of that first sentence in the second paragraph. Um, he'd also like to strike after cons consultation with the code enforcement officer. Um, mm -mm. He basically, I, I feel that he doesn't feel that uh, that is necessary. Uh, the, the way the ordinance is today, um, we don't have to consult with the code enforcement officer and he'd like to um, strike that as well. Um, there's another, there's another uh, line further on down, without the need for replanting, he'd like to strike that. Um, stumps are, we had stumps are not removed. Um, and I think that was a typo, it should be stumps are removed. Nope. 
and the next sentence where it begins, the area shall be required, he'd like to replace that word with permitted. So, John, the, the, the direction you're heading on this is probably a direction that we really can't go. I mean, I can't see adopting this resolution, tacking on something at the end saying, unless the town planner and the applicant agree otherwise, it, I, I think that's probably too vague and too conditional to really be a, a, a proper finding by the board itself. Um, how would you feel about tabling this thing till the next meeting? So well, I, you and Marine could have a chance to discuss this, because yeah. I know this particular treatment is something which she's done a lot of thought about, and it's unfortunate she's not here. To, right. Perhaps we could right. sort this out. Uh, but I, I don't, unless board members have additional feelings on this, I don't I, think I that's do know that in the following do. condition, condition number four, um, that allows us to work with the town attorney uh, to come up with the final wording of the declaration. And I guess we're asking for a similar condition. Peter. Uh, I'm sorry, Eileen. I, th I don't think what you're asking is something we can do because the changes you're requesting are substantive and contrary to the intent of what's here. And so, I personally wouldn't want to authorize those changes. For example, I think it is quite purposeful that stumps be removed. The idea is to keep the, the, the stumps stay there. That's not a typo. The stumps are supposed to be there to keep the area rough and natural. Um, the approval of the code enforcement officer or consultation has been a significant point with the planning board on a number of occasions and part of the reasons we're, we're doing these conditions is to make it explicit that the involvement of the, the code enforcement officer is required. So you're asking for some substantive changes so I don't, I, to me, for my vote, we don't have a meeting of the minds so I don't think it's an appropriate situation to say that you can work out some no clearing language with Maureen, we only do that when generally we have a meeting of the minds and the only thing we're looking for is some clarification and based on what you said, there is no meeting of the minds here. Okay. Yeah, John, the, the adequacy of road maintenance and stuff like that, that is, there are some standard approaches and documents that, you know, we sometimes will let be right. decided later, but this is fairly substantive stuff you're talking about, and I, I, I just don't think that we as a matter of policy would want to ha a, adopt a resolution of this type and let it be understood later, you know, yep. later. so we can, we can do this one, uh, um, you can propose changes tonight, I, you can table it. How would you like to proceed? Um, so I take those comments on board. I, I'm, I'm not sure we are actually that far apart, but I accept the fact that absent Maureen being here, it's difficult to reconcile these points of views. I, I feel like the meeting that we did have um, led me to believe that we, uh, we were aligned, um, but I can understand why the board's perspective, having not sat in that meeting, um, could perhaps be different than that. Um, I, I think there, there are elements to this language um, that uh, I would prefer uh, to be different. Um, and if the nature of, um, of the changes that we're requesting is more than you think is appropriate for the board, then I think there's no alternative but to, but to table it now and, and to continue discussion and come back with, with something uh, firmer. That's, I, I'm, I, I'm not comfortable going forward with it as is uh, if we were have to do that. And I do feel like there's uh, ample room for further discussion and a meeting of the minds. Uh, and I take on board the board's comments uh, about the perceived distance between those, um, given what you have in front of you. Jonathan. And, and just, um, we did get an email from Maureen that had been forwarded from, I think, your council on it um, that late today. And I understand if he's on vacation in summer, a lot of people take vacations. but. Uh, one thing that kind of troubles me with the language that was submitted 
here is the involvement of a code enforcement officer to remove a tree. Um, to me, I, I don't see why a code enforcement officer would have to get involved in that sort of situation. So I'm kind of swinging the other way and saying that this language might be a little bit more, but I'd like to hear from Maureen, who then may have to consult the town attorney with regards to that. Um, so I, 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 I appreciate the applicant trying to table this to kind of get a resolve so we're not just on a whim here um, tonight. So I, I'd appreciate another. Well, uh, as, I, more time. as I said to John to Rick, I'd rather do it properly and take longer than to try and rush it through and not have it be what I think it ought to be. Um, um, I mean, I, I'm, you know, on that one for the code enforcement officer, frankly, I would just say, you know, if lightning hits a tree, is it really, you know, do I need to wait for the code enforcement officer to cut it down? I'm happy to engage in that discussion, but that's the point of view that I, I come, you know, I come to the, to the discussion with. Um, so that, that's the nature of it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure there's anything else to say. Yeah, the other option, Mark, would be if we adopted this one tonight, you could always come back later and, and ask to change some of the conditions of approval if you found them to be, you know, un, uh, undesirable. But I think if you're in no great rush that may be tabling it and getting it done once and for all next month after you've had a chance to talk to Maureen would probably be the most efficient way to take care of your interests as well as the board's. So, just a point of procedure, does that require that the whole thing is tabled till the next meeting or is, can some of this? That, that's, that's what I wanted to ask. Is there, is there uh, a basis for determining whether or not there is a meeting on the minds on the other elements so that we're reduced to uh, a more expedited uh, hearing on the, ne the, the next time around? I, I, I don't know your procedures. I'm not sure we have not. this this is one of the conditions of approval and if, if we don't have agreement on that condition we wouldn't be likely to approve it with a you know with a placeholder for this last condition you get plugged in later it just it usually doesn't work that way that makes sense Peter we we can hold our public hearing uh, we can discuss I have a couple questions about some of the changes that John has indicated that they've made. Uh, well, again, we can discuss other aspects, and then we can table it to the next meeting. Yeah, we, we, to do that. we will have a public hearing piece of this, and yeah. you're, you're right, we can, we can talk about this. So we can determine whether we are in agreement in other areas by having our discussion tonight. Is that, yeah. That's what you're looking for, right? That'd be Make sure there are me. nothing uh, else. Yeah, that'd be helpful correct? to me. Oh, absolutely. We, we, we actually jumped in in the middle of John's presentation, and that's where this, um, the, 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 this digression came. But, yeah. I basically included my... Okay, that's... Okay. Um, I, I'd like to answer any questions that the board may have. Okay, John, let me do this. Let me uh, open the uh, thing for public comment, and then we'll have a full-scale discussion with you. Uh, are there any members of the public who would like to be heard on this application? Yes, ma'am. If you could give us your name and address, please, and uh, we'd like to hear what you have to say. I just want to take this opportunity to introduce myself, Barbara Wickham. I'm at 20 Old Mill Road. I don't know when you did your site walk, but if the leaves were off the tree and you stopped at the bridge by the little pond, my house would be right in front of you. So I'm interested in everything that goes on around me because I'm on the intersection. So to the left of me is Old Mill Road and to the right of me is Old Mill Road. So I'm right there in the V um, and I'm very interested in what's going on around me. I love the waiver with the um, width of the road. I think that that is is very consistent with the property and pleases me very much. I am a little concerned about water because when I did the renovations on my house, we had to do some French drains, extensive French draining, and the water flowing between that property is very important to my homestead. It needs to flow because if it doesn't, it ends up in my wetlands, which is most of what I own. So um, I just wanted to introduce myself, let you know where I live, and that I'm very interested in the project. 
sounds great so far, but as we go along, I know we didn't make any septic plans or any issues that we're not that far along on the project, but I'm very interested in what's going on and just wanted to let you know who I am, where I am. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you very comments. much. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you uh, for no other um, people wishing to be heard, we'll close with public comment uh, part of the meeting and uh, open it up for discussion among the board members and with questions for John and Mark. Do they have any? Caroline, you said you had a... I have two. Um, one of the... Um, in the town engineer's letter, one of the things he talks about is the monumentation and he refers to the iron pipe or iron rebar, uh, and you refer in yours to granite monuments, or is it a mix of monumentation? It, it is, it is. Um, you know, typically there are iron pipes uh, that are used to monument the corners of the, the new lots, and those are all shown on the plan. Um, the one thing that Bob Malley uh, asked for, and we have put it on the revised plan, are uh, two granite monuments at the, uh, on either side of the 50-foot right-of-way where it intersects, where Old Mill Road yeah. intersects Old Ocean House Road. And those are shown on the plan. Um, so everything is monumented the way that the town has asked for. And my other question has to do with, I'm assuming the plans we have are not as current as the ones you were referring to in your presentation, because my note 27 doesn't right. agree with what your note 27 is. The notes um, were amended and are added to as a result of the latest plan that we got from, uh, our latest letter we got from Steve Hardy. Okay. Yep. All right. That's it. Those are pretty easy. <clears throat> you mentioned when you spoke that you still intend to have the um, natural vegetation line surveyed and monumented. And I would just note in the, word, the new wording change we have here, the reference to surveying and monumentation is removed. I'm not sure why. We'd have to talk to Maureen about that. But I would suggest that when you go through it again, you reinsert the reference to the fact that you're going to do dimensioned offsets from lot two and three, but put back in there the fact that it's going to be surveyed and monumented. I'm yep. not sure why that came out. I think she, that was just a, um, something that she left out, not purposely, but okay. um, we, we intend to monument the okay. line. I, I, I'll just say, I think we're we're very close, and I probably the only point for me, the only point of contention is the wording of this one condition, this condition three. Right. So, agree. No, I would agree. Joe, nothing. No, I, I, I just like to say that um, I, I'm glad to hear that someone um, who lives in the neighborhood uh, appreciates the efforts, especially with the, the. Um, the driveway, for lack of a better word, but I know that there was a lot of time and uh, consideration from the board put into that, whether with waiving that requirement to um, uh, widen it to the, I think it's the 22 foot to keep it at the, the 14 foot with the buffers on the side. But I'm glad to hear that someone that lives in the neighborhood um, says that that sort of reflects with how that road is now. So I'm, I'm, it makes me feel better that the board is willing to waive that, um, and especially coming from somebody who's kind of a third party but knows the neighborhood very well. So. <laughs> um, um, thank you for those comments, which are very helpful. I, I, I guess I'd just like to add that um, it, it's, it's, um, it's always been my intention to maintain the state of play of that meadow as it exists today. Right, so, so I mean, not everywhere, obviously, I'm going to build a couple of houses on it, but let's say along that southern border. Um, Maureen has, has helped me understand what the concerns of the town and the board would be with respect to that. And what we've really been discussing is what's the best way to go about um, recording 
the current state of play and then providing a basis for enforcing that. I have no particular difficulty with that in principle. Um, mostly what I have discussed with Maureen, and, and I think it's, it's been a, help, a helpful, constructive discussion because she's been educating me, is um, how does one go about that in a practical way? For example, measuring off the center of a stream that flows through a marsh to me is not practical. The, the course of a stream through a marsh will necessarily alter itself over time. So I don't find that to be all that useful as a basis for measurement. But I think, you know, John, uh, uh, along with Maureen, came up with, with a different basis for creating that measurement. So then we said, well, measurement to where and how often. Uh, th these are not things that I think in principle are troubling to me. It's the practical application of it that I want to be sure it doesn't result in me, you know, getting a fine on the first day that, uh, that the thing is in place because I'm suddenly out of bounds on something that I didn't do anything to. Um, so it's, it's, so that's, that's the spirit within which I offer up the comment that I made earlier about the code enforcement officer. Um, is it a necessary and practical element of enforcement. If the town in its determination says, yes, in our experience it is, then I'm likely to find that acceptable, but I'd like to understand why. And likewise say, taking the exact situation as it exists today, is it really necessary in this case to maintain um, the, the meadow and achieve the town's objectives? So it may well be that further discussion will be helpful to that, and I'm happy to carry that out. Yeah, I, I think the, the more I hear you talking, particularly, Mark, I think having a further chat with Maureen would be a good thing. The, the model I think she's using is not one of first impression. They've had some other parcels, not necessarily like this, but they have had a keen interest in, in trying to preserve its, its natural state. And I think I find myself probably more toward Jonathan's view that where this is a, you know, 13 plus acre parcel, most of which is a meadow, and trying to figure out the precise foliage line, which is a moving target anyway, to decide where you mow and don't mow, strikes me as more perhaps uh, regulation than the situation calls for. But there are some town policies on this type of thing that I think probably you folks ought to you know, talk through and make sure you're totally comfortable. Thank you. That's the process we've been engaged with. I'm, I'm sorry we weren't able to complete it before tonight. I have one quick question. Did you ever consider just putting, uh, like, doing a path just north of the NOMO line that would kind of give you a permanent boundary that you could visibly see? Um, I, I, because it's a meadow, um, to create such a path uh, would require, I, I believe, mm, doing things that would disturb the natural state of it. What we've, what we've done, um, and what has been done, because I haven't owned the property for all that long, is that the, the large portion of the meadow is not mowed very frequently. So it's, it, it grows and then it's periodically cut when it gets high. Um, but um, there's a walking easement uh, that was granted along that border. And for that purpose, there's been a mowing line that's been kept there. Um, there's a a certain amount of discretion that goes into the location of that, but it's inside the existing uh, vegetation line. Uh, that, that serves the purpose that you'd suggest, but uh, I don't know if you, were, if you were on the site walk or not, but there's a pretty clear demarcation between where the grasses of the meadow stop and where the shrubbery of the marsh starts. It's, and so Maureen's point is, can we come up with some way to uh, ensure that that line is maintained um, which, as I say, in principle, I agree, um, but I think um, uh, reflecting um, or, or endorsing the comments of the board, how does one do that practically in a way that, you know, isn't trying to regulate nature? That's, I think, what we're searching for a response to. I just one additional comment on the drainage to address your, your concern. Um, the road, the gravel road will be uh, upgraded and um, right now it's, it's just, as you know, it's just a, a rough gravel road. There'll be a, a, a new surface applied to it. There'll be um, a cross slope. And in this case, we're, uh, we're directing the drainage on the southern side of the road away from your property. 
um, and it will be directed into a grass swale which will flow down along the southerly side of Old Mill Road and ultimately discharge into the stream that outlets from the pond. I, I, just one question on that. Are those culverts um, under the proposed yes. driveways? Yes. Uh, well, the public comment is over, but if you have a quick question, go ahead. If you'd like to come look at the plans after Ms. Wickham, we if you'd like to come up and look at these plans yeah, at the end of the meeting, happy to show you in more detail. And also, oh, don't don't sit down yet. <laughs> the um, the squares on uh, each proposed lot are proposed areas that a septic system could be placed, correct? Okay. Yes. And that would sort sort of serve as the sewage for those particular lots. Site. Wastewater disposal systems. Okay, right. great. I think that was one of the concerns that was raised. And that's, um, if the board remembers, uh, we're asking for four waivers. Uh, that was one of the waivers, was to <coughs> um, submit final design on the wastewater systems once we know exactly where the homes will be uh, placed. Um, and I believe that waiver has been granted at the last meeting. There were two waivers that were granted. That was one in the scale not to exceed one inch equals 40. That was another one that was granted. So the, the two remaining waivers uh, uh, have to do with the road width, the reduction in the road width, and the road alignment. Right. Yep. Any other comments or questions? Uh, I, I don't know if this is um, proper for tonight, but maybe if there's an issue with regards to the waiver of the road um, that might require uh, any more work to be put in, that the board could address those concerns with the applicant tonight. So next time when they come back, they'd be prepared. Yeah, I mean, we certainly ought to make whatever ideas we have known on that. Personally, I, I think the road width and alignment waivers make sense in the context of this property and, and I would be yeah I, I echo that sentiment favorite. also we had the uh, fire chief weigh in on that yeah. yes I thought I, yeah. I thought we did that at the last meeting as well we we discussed it we at discussed the last it. meeting it I don't think the official. board granted it, yeah, it, was um, it was the last meeting but but the fire chief um, is supportive of those waivers they, they, Peter. Put in a hammerhead at his request. The hammerhead uh, will, as, as requested, is, will be relocated from approximately this location to a location which is opposite um, an existing driveway. Peter, I want to clarify one thing. I don't think the board can can have granted any waivers yet. I think I, I think the board can give you our sense of whether we have concerns with it, but a waiver isn't granted until we do a final approval. I think what we may have, because yeah, that, that would be part of the. Oh, yeah, no, we're not granting the waiver tonight. I think we're. And we're not, yeah, we're waiver. discussing it. But e even in terms of, of waivers that might have been discussed in the past until the project approved, the project is not approved. I just wanted to make that clarification. Not that I have any problem with any of those right. waivers. I just wanted it to be clear that until there's a vote, there hasn't been a vote. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I think you wanted but I, it, I don't have a pro I think I'm one who does not like to grant waivers from road width, but in this case, I think it's appropriate. Uh, I, I think John Moore's question is, is there anything you ought to worry about for next month's right. uh, apart from this uh, meadow mowing uh, issue? I'm, no. I have none of my own that I'd be concerned no, about. No. No, I, I'm fine with both the width and the uh, center line. As long as he doesn't redo the entire plan between now and then, he's <laughs> probably in good shape. 
If there's nothing else on this matter, then I guess we would have a motion uh, to table it until the next regular meeting of the planning board. Let me get the... Which is... Can you word one? Yeah. I move that the application of Mark Jordy for minor subdivision review of a proposed four lot subdivision located at 41 Mill Road be tabled until the August, whatever it is, meeting of the planning board. Second. Uh, 16th. 15th? 16th. 16th. August 16th meeting of the planning board. Second. If we have a second in motion. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, folks. John Old, John Old, Phil Maureen, and Phil expect to hear from you. Thank you, folks. Uh, there is uh, no further agenda items. There is a chance for the public to be heard on any other matter. There being no members of the public expressing interest, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion we adjourn. Second. Second. In favor? Terry, we are adjourned.